So I'm Toby Wolf, and I'm a business development director in Everdon, and I've basically been involved for many years in digital transformation of factories, which is largely focused on machinery. But today we're going to show you, without the assistance of any PowerPoint slides, uh, some demonstrations on generative AI and its applications in an in industrial context. Um, it's very people centric. Um, I love using the stuff. and I'm going to um, ask um, Rahul, who's going to be driving the demonstrations here, how on earth did you get into Gen AI? Hey, Toby. So that's very interesting. So I have been a technologist for last 24 years, and a few years back I got into artificial intelligence. But the challenge I always faced was it was so much kind of deterministic. You have to do a lot of hand coding, programming. Whereas uh, when I saw generative AI, it is so natural. It is so human centric. It's like you can ask in natural language. I really got hooked up into it. That's that's really exciting. That's great. So um, one of the famous world famous quotes from Henry Ford was whenever he wanted to hire a pair of hands to work in his car factory, he said, unfortunately, it comes along with a brain, with an opinion. And he didn't want that. He wanted robotic performance from people. Nowadays, of course, we work in a knowledge environment. So the story here really is for an engineer working in a factory, his primary asset is his ability to become an expert. So I'm going to hand over to you, Rahul, to, ru to run through the first example example of three of how Gen AI, Gen AI works for someone in this industrial environment. Thank you, Toby. So let's go into the manufacturing world. If you look into the manufacturing world, there are power plants, right, or other kind of plants, and each of the plants will have a lot of OEM. There is a lot of bill of material information which is coming in, and for each OEM, there will be maintenance manual, <laughs> and each of these maintenance manuals are generally like hundreds and thousands of pages. So whenever there is a problem, you want to do a fault diagnosis. Someone has to go through this information, where to find it, which OEM maintenance manual I need to go through. It's a long queue of the work and it takes a lot of time. But thankfully, with the help of generative AI, we have our AI, AI companion where we can get it much faster. Let's see how. So what we have done is we have created a manufacturing maintenance virtual assistant and it can help us questions related to maintenance and diagnosis and we'll take a use case where there is a power plant and let's say we want to inquire about certain equipments in that yeah so in power plant one of the key component uh, which is a small but very key component is the oil mist separator so i would want to know what is the filter efficiency of the oil mist separator so i asked that question and ask my AI companion uh, what's the answer. It is searching through the knowledge base and it gives me the answer. On the back of the scene, it has analyzed the question, it's found where the answer can be evaluated it and gave me the answer. Now, second thing is when we are dealing with this hundreds and thousands of pages, it's very, very hard to really go through all the information and explore ourselves. So it is a very competent, helpful assistant for me. It is also recommending me certain questions based on the previous question which I asked. Yeah. So what is the purpose of an oil mist separator? This question I didn't ask, but based on my historical question, it is suggesting me that, right? So I can use this to explore uh, my details of the oil mist separator. It helps me understand that. Now I'm doing a lot more diagnosis and but I don't know about this component. So again, my friend, JNAI friend comes there for my help, provides me kind of a, a certain questions which I can use for and uh, really ask my questions basically. So I'm interested in the uh, mist particles, how it is, how does an oil mist separator capture and separate oil mist particles. So I get more understanding of this is how it does it. Now I want to break this whole chain of prediction and I want to ask my own question so I can go and ask what are the attributes of the oil mist separator. So I ask my question and it kind of answer that with all the details of that flow rate, filter efficiency, etc. So you see this information is coming from thousands of pages of information and giving me the accurate answer. Right? So once I have got these details, I can keep on asking and exploring. But now I also want to see this was one set of document, one OEM, and I got into the maintenance manual. 
but I'm also interested in the other parts of the power plant because there are gear, uh, pump motors and other equipment which I'm interested in. So I want to understand the motor rating. What is the motor rating of the gear pump motor? Now, this particular equipment comes from another OEM, but I am able to get the answer for that as well, which means I have the multiple sources of the document, what you just saw, and in a single unified interface and natural language, I'm having an assistant which gives me all the answer. So this is one part. Now, there are other areas which uh, this virtual assistant can help us. This is coming from the documents, but there are underlying systems called the manufacturing execution systems, maintenance systems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you want to relate information from them also. So I want to know what is the maintenance status. So I'm interested in knowing the maintenance status of uh, differential pressure transmitter. So I asked that question, can you provide me the maintenance status of a differential pressure transmitter? At this particular moment, then this tool is going, and it is also looking into your structure data, other databases, and giving the answer that next schedule calibration is on the October 5th, 2024. So I, I get an answer. So this is how the overall um, assistant is coming in. There is a possibility, I may not like the answer, Okay, so what I can al always do is to really give that feedback because sometimes it, it has to really learn and it is not good enough for certain kind of a questions, right? So if I'm not able to get that answer, there is a possibility to give the feedback. For example, I asked the question, but maybe I'm not happy with this question and I can say I didn't like it. I can give the feedback. It will be audited and the the model will continuously improve. But it is an interesting feature that it also gives you thoughts and reasonings, basically. Like on what basis the answer is basically coming in. So it gives the sources and it also gives the explanation. Like you can see thoughts and reasoning. So that's how powerful it is. So what we just saw is a very simple yet very powerful demonstration of how from thousands of document of different OEMs, maintenance manuals, multiple sources, structured data, with single interface, we can got all the answer for our fault diagnosis of our manufacturing plant. Thanks, Rahul. Yeah, I can see, how, can see how that's going to increase um, access to information. If you look at evident.com forward slash solutions forward slash generative AI, you'll see some case studies where the people who have already deployed this in our world are claiming a 30% increase in knowledge worker productivity. Um, so we, we know this is pretty powerful. Um, there's this um, a kind of the first time you see this, you think, well, yeah, I kind of use Google to find a lot of information. I do it on my on my smartphone here. And a good example to show the difference with Gen AI would be if I type in the question or the statement, don't show me pictures of elephants. You can guess what you're going to see on my screen, a million pictures of elephants. So the whole point is that lookups tend not to understand the question truly or the context of the question and what you've shown is that it does both that's pretty good but let's have, have a look now about um you're trying to look something up in a manual so you've already defined the source and you would typically use control f to try and find the keyword combination how can it help in that context Rahul? yeah so that's uh, again a um interesting thing so within the manufacturing world we all know that there can be big documents of the it system one good example i would say is like sap hana if you look at the sap hana administration guide it is like more than 2000 page and if you look at overall sap documentation it can be in thousands of pages how do mm. i really find my information right so in this kind of uh, question set what i can do is i can ask my questions Let's say what are data types in SAP? I oh, know. So it gives me those answers, right? And I really don't have to go through all the uh, long document. If you look at because the document is large, it is taking time to evaluate the results, basically. Yeah. 
If you see internally, uh, it applies the searching, how many passages it have identified. It identified 14 passages. And finally, to kind of summarize this whole information in, in a very, very summarized way to, for you. I can ask uh, other questions on SAP HANA. So I really don't have to do control F, search through those hundreds and thousands of pages. It's right away in front of me. So that really helps. So this is you can navigate through large uh, manuals and, and get your answers basically. Yeah, so I get my answer on the recovery strategy in SAP HANA. And interestingly, you would see here, it is also going through different pages, sources. You, you can also have the citations from where the these answers are coming, right? If you really think through how many uh, different pages it has actually navigated for you and given you the answer, that's really uh, amazing actually, right? Uh, so let me let me quickly show you actually like uh, this particular answer was coming from 1397 page. Uh, this is coming from 1418 page. So it is like really scan through 2000 pages in a couple of seconds and give you the very summarized answer. And you can validate that. Yeah. So Toby, that was like how we navigate with uh, uh, this kind of administration guides. That's fantastic. It seems pretty smart, doesn't it, Gen AI? And I'm curious yeah. to know what would happen if you ask Gen AI what value it thinks it delivers to the modern manufacturer. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Let's see. Uh, we'll, we'll ask uh, what value it can bring. So this again going through internally and asking the OK, so this is an interesting answer. So first of all, it makes everyone an expert. So I agree with you uh, it because uh, I'm not an expert in manufacturing, but it gave me like very expert answer in a less than 10 minutes. It saves time. So I kind of really navigated through multiple manuals of multiple OEMs and also SAP HANA manual. It really saved me time. Less than 10 minutes, I can get any like 10 different questions. Precisely, I can get them. Addresses complexity. So if you consider that <laughs> when we are dealing with the OEM manuals, they are in like hundreds of them, thousands of pages each, and it really gives you the answer very, very quickly. And of course, increasing awareness in adoption to the soft floor. I think if you have a natural language capability, I'm sure every one of us love it, uh, including our children and every all the colleagues. So it really uh, helps in the adoption part of the this kind of technology. Yeah. You want to talk about data security for the moment in terms of how this intelligence can be applied within a company and controlled within a company from a systems architecture perspective, please? Yeah, so so basically in the way we build this solution, uh, your data is your data. It doesn't go outside your network. So what we do is the model stays in your environment, network environment. Whatever fine tuning and training is needed, it is done on your data and it doesn't go out of your firewall. All your learning, what we are keeping, that also remains in your environment. So fundamentally, once you deploy this whole solution, whether your data or your model training or improvements, everything remains in your firewall. Nothing goes out, basically. That's great. So um, you said you built these demonstration systems pretty quickly. Um, and that's fantastic. It's clearly an easy tool for you to work with. If you were to uh, be asked to put these into a production environment where the rigor has to be correct and everything checked through before you end up with a system that could go wrong for a company, how, how long would it typically take from a project perspective to go from an initial idea or workshop, if you like, to a production system? Yeah, so typically I would say it takes six to eight weeks time from the ideations to data analysis, pre-processing of the data, fine tuning it and uh, changing and validating it and finally moving to production. Six to eight weeks time is a kind of a nominal period for this kind of project to the getting delivered. OK, and you might see uh, Rahul in, in the chat. There's a question from uh, someone in the audience. Uh, 
I assume the Knowledge Pilot scans all available content and data on the company's IT systems. How can employees add content to the Knowledge Pilot that is on their own secured workspace, perhaps as a separate area that you want to control? I think perhaps uh, like some of the examples you've had here, you might want to share everything with everyone. How, how would you segment the data to uh, to enable that, that kind of segmentation to work? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good, excellent question, actually. So uh, that's a bit technical, but let me show you. So there is a way that if you if you go into the environment, actually you can uh, upload your documents, basically. So this is an interface where we are uploading it from the back end. But uh, if you if you look at the creation of the uh, virtual assistant, it's a very, very easy process and you can keep on uploading your own knowledge base and and keep it uh, kind of personal uh, name is for you, right? So that's possible. Fantastic. Thanks, Rahul. So uh, we're pretty much out of time. You've shown how the system will save people an enormous amount of time um, by intelligently finding information relevant to your question. That's very impressive. Um, which is your favorite part of the system? So my favorite uh, part of the system is uh, really the context and the relationship in the way it is building. We, Toby, like you know, we we all live in a very like information heavy world. There is so much of the data around and there is a struggle to find the relations with uh, and the pattern between that information. But with this tool, we can navigate through all that information, find the relationship between them, and really get a very summarized view of based on the intent of your question. Right? That's amazing because that uh, it's like someone is there to think for you, and someone is really helping you with finding those relationships and patterns. Thank you. OK, so we're almost out of time. The call to action, if you want to know more, you can contact me, toby.wolf at everton.com. Rahul, same uh, address format for you. That's great. That's an easy way of doing it. But what we'll be asking you to do is think about bringing together people who are the knowledge workers in your company. And that could be some guy in a mechanics outfit with greasy hands whose job is to fix things. And it starts at that level. It doesn't always start off in some IT office project discussion. It, it actually starts off with thinking about the way we can improve the productivity who can, of, of people who can really make a difference to the manufacturer. Then you can be another one of our case studies talking about a 30% saving in productivity time and hopefully greater production output in your in your company uh, producing whatever it is that you make. Um, but uh, thanks very much for your interest in that. If you want to know more, talk to us or visit evident.com um, forward slash solutions forward slash generative AI and then you'll see a load of case studies and, and more information there. So thank you very much for your interest. Look forward to hearing from you. And of course, any feedback is most welcome.